So once again, bring on another coach. All right, we have Leanne here today. Did I pronounce that name correctly, by the way? Yes, you did. Thank you. All right, awesome. So Leanne, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Introduce us to the new audience real fast. Perfect. My name is Leanne Hatler. I own a gym in uh, California, Sonora, California, which is right smack in the middle. Yosemite is our backyard, so we're very blessed that way. And I've been in the fitness industry for about eight years now. And I really, really, really enjoy helping people get the ever living most out of life. And my vessel for doing that is helping them live adventurous lives by embracing health journeys. Awesome. Awesome. I love that philosophy, that model. That's really good. That's a great way to sort of live life and, you know, just help everyone else kind of achieve that, you know, level of happiness and mean healthy and all that. So uh, that's kind of what we're going to do today, actually, is with the 12 tips that we've created here, um, tips, hacks, whatever you want to call them about nutrition, just trying to give you guys a little bit of simple things that can make things easier, whether it be a habit that we can create or a habit that we can modify and manipulate or whether it just be decisions that we make kind of throughout the day. So we're just going to be going down the list here that we've created already and we're going to be sort of explaining each one. All right. So number one here, swapping out your crispy chicken for the grill. All right. And this is kind of basic. If you think about it, okay, obviously if you go and get like Chick-fil-A, um, any of those places, if it's Crispy, it is going to be most likely deep fried in oil and you get grilled, it is going to be grilled on a stove. So one has a lot more calories, a lot more fat, and one has a lot, a uh, few less calories and a lot less fat. Yeah, for sure. And one of my other favorite thoughts around this idea here is a lot of times people think they have to give up their favorites. And you don't have to give up your favorites, you just need to see if you can move the needle towards better. So it doesn't have to be all or nothing. If you love a chicken sandwich, like you said, just sub it out, make it grilled, add on some extra veggies, but still enjoy that chicken sandwich. Doesn't have to be super crazy complicated. Yeah, and in my experience, the best way to actually satisfy this craving is if you have an air fryer, make your own crispy chicken sandwich at home. Absolutely incredible. All you have to do is you have the chicken breast, you have flour, and you have some like egg whites. So just put the chicken breast in the egg whites, soak it a little bit, throw it in the flour, you put it in the uh, um, air fryer for like seven minutes on each side at like 450, 400, something like that, or 350. Um, and it comes out and it tastes so, so good. I mean, when I had air fryer, I was having that every other day. It was incredible. Yes, we do something similar at home. I don't have an air fryer. But I love a homemade baked crispy chicken, so we do similar. Uh, we just use panko breadcrumbs for that little extra crunch. So egg wash and that seasoned panko, be sure to go ahead and dump in a bunch of seasonings in there and then dredge it in that, bake it in the oven. It comes out super juicy, very crispy, and again, light in calories and very satisfying. Yeah, yeah, totally. That makes sense. That makes sense. That's that's pretty good for people that don't have there prior to. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. No. Number two, all right, avoid processed foods if you can. All right, so this is something called, this, this kind of stems from the idea of a paleo diet where you can kind of eat anything you want as long as it's like a whole food, like it comes from the ground. It's, it's like a natural product per se. It's not, not processed. Um, and the main reason behind this is for two, two reasons. All right, it's more or less science and backed by my experience. So backed by science is just that it's going to, most likely be a lot higher in calories and it's going to have a lot more sodium in it all right sodium not necessarily is a bad thing for you but when you have an insane amount throughout the day that's when it starts to creep up and we actually start to see a little bit of problems with it all right but when you have whole foods it takes away that sodium count goes way way down pretty much the only sodium you're gonna have is going to be either from your seasoning or from like the salt that you're using on your chicken like we just discussed before um, and the other reason is just a lot of like in inflammatory side effects I found from when I was having a lot of processed foods before. Um, it was just, you know, it fit my macros and I was able to do it, but I, I did not feel the best. I did not, you know, feel the best throughout the day. Yes. And 
my approach when coaching nutrition is whole food as often as possible. The other thing in all those processed foods is you've eliminated a lot of those other nutrient factors that we don't think about. Uh, and a lot of the fiber, minerals, uh, vitamins, all those kind of things have been stripped out so that it's a quick process product versus that whole food. So it's going to be less satisfying and less is, um, filling and satiating as well as less healthful. Yes, exactly, exactly. So number three, stock up on protein snacks. Uh, this is a topic or actually a, this is I stole this actually from last week when we had a five ways to actually build up your protein because I thought it was such a good idea. And it was because a lot of times when we are snacking, it's like, okay, you're going to have a bag of potato chips. And even if it's something more or less, you know, quote unquote healthier, like, okay, let's say it's carrots and hummus, you know, there's like really no protein in that. All right. And so if you can find ways to have protein based snacks and the best ones that like we could come up with was either like a protein bar, those uh, small flavored Greek yogurt uh, packages that are like 15 grams of protein and like almost no grams of sugar. Um, and then just packets of beef jerky. Those are, those are some of the best stuff where if you can snack on those, it's going to be low in calorie. The satiating effect is going to be a lot higher because it's higher in protein and you're going to be hitting your goal a lot sooner. Thousand percent. That is the number one tip I give to a lot of clients who are like, Oh gosh, I had this, the crunchies after dinner, or, you know, I just need to munch on something. I always tell them to grab for the protein because it's just going to help actually in the long run, help curb those cravings because you're going to be satisfied and be super full. Um, I love anything that's individually portioned, when it comes to especially trying to combat snacking. It's really hard to overeat. And I'm of the opinion I'd rather pay a little bit more for that individual pack so that it's just built in portion control. Yeah, exactly. So in that essence, you can go, this is kind of something I heard from Mind Pump, which was uh, instead of having like the whole bag of, of chips, like you have to go to the store and get just the smaller bags. Like if you want to go get chips, that's fine, but you can't have them stocked up at home. Yeah. You need to go to the gas station out to the store and get a small bag of potato chips and that you can have. Um, and that's sort of just a habit thing because then it's like how many times are you actually going to get in your car go to the store just to get one measly bag of potato chips. It's like, it's not going to happen as much as what it's uh, already happening at the house. If you have it stocked up. Yeah. That's such a good concept to have in your brain is knowing what those things are that are kind of trigger foods for you. It's funny that you said chips. Cause that's one of mine as well. Chips don't live in my house because I would eat them all. So, and another one that we have done is if you want dessert, you have to make it. So we don't ever store pre-made desserts so cookies cakes any of those kind of things we don't we don't store them in our house we have the ingredients to make them but if you want chocolate chip cookies after dinner you've got to go make chocolate chip cookies i like that too and a lot of times you look at it you're like wow how much sugar am i pouring into this this is this is this. Yeah. yes <laughs> all right yeah tip number four all right is located based upon the veggies all right for a lot of people that have trouble getting in their vegetables um, it's usually recommended one or two servings a day. This is, I fall in this category so much. I still sometimes, or not sometimes, a lot of times I fail getting in a lot of veggies throughout the day. But the number one tip I would have for veggies is going to be grill them, right? And the reason for this is that for one, I think they taste so much better. And two, you can easily, uh, they're more versatile. You can add them into your other foods you're making. So imagine just having like a whole pepper is not like the most, you know, greatest tasting thing in the world but if you can just grill the pepper throw some salt throw some pepper on it all right and then you can add it to your like chicken dish you can add it to your beef dish your pork dish whatever other food that you're having it's a lot easier to get in all of a sudden you're having like one whole bell pepper you know you're having one whole you know tomato if you add that in it's a, it's really easy to get it in yes and as somebody who loves veggies but coaches a lot of people who don't I love the concept of cooking it different than what you're used to. So I loved that you said grilling because that's so easy to do. Another one that I really enjoy and encourage co um, other clients to experiment with is like oven roasting. Put it in the oven and drizzle it with some balsamic and put a little seasoning on there and roast those veggies. You might not like them steamed or boiled because they come out mushy and weird, but if you roast them, it really deepens that flavor and you can enhance it with those seasonings. 
And then I love that you said add it to other dishes because then you can make it simple to put it into things. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. It becomes a whole meal at that point, which is really good. All right. Yeah. For making nutrition a little bit simple, all right, is utilizing protein powder. And this goes to the idea of like we're trying to hit our protein goals. If we are trying to lose weight, if we're trying to gain muscle, protein is still very, uh, very important. You still need to hit your protein goals or should at least try to come close to hitting them. And utilizing protein powder, for whatever reason, there's some people out there that like really try to stay away from it. Um, I've never really seen that problem. Like obviously, you know, you want to get whole foods in there, but I, I have yet to meet anyone who their only source of protein is protein powder. Like they're trying to get in. Like I'm getting 180 grams of protein a day, all from protein powder. Like I have yet to meet someone like that. I'm sure they're out there somewhere, um, but it's not as common as what some people believe. Um, but definitely if you're falling short consistently 20 to 40 grams, it's like start to use a protein shake in there. You know, it's going to be an easy, low calorie, um, high protein meal. Yeah. And it's quick. That's why I am such a huge fan of, protein powders. I have a lot of clients that are on the go, working crazy hours in their jobs, um, only have, you know, maybe 20 minutes to hit lunch, you know, or the, if they're lucky, they get a break. And I love a protein powder because you don't have to have much to make it available. Cup, water, shaky ball thing, that's it. And you can have something just like you said, packed with that protein. You can fuel yourself up on the fly and you don't have to worry about, holy cow, am I going to feel bloated after this? Or is it going to be too much? Am I going to be able to finish? What do I do if I don't? And it's easy for it to go with you. You can put a, you know, put a scoop. I am notorious for having scoops of protein powder in baggies all over the place. They're in the car. They're in the glove box. They're in my gym bag. They're at work. They're everywhere because it's super convenient. You never know when you're going to find yourself really hungry it's a hot minute till you get to eat again and you can really quickly put that together yeah. and i think it's i think in my opinion uh protein shakes is going to be like the most like versatile i know i already use that word but the most, most versatile like there are so many freaking mm -hmm. recipes out there oh. for a low protein shake everything is on youtube i mean easily you can find it it's i mean it takes like 30 seconds to make and you can do it in so, so many ways. It's definitely a great source. If you're not utilizing that, I highly recommend start to um, move that into your routine mostly almost every day if you can, All right? Number, number six right here is actually gonna be sort of a flip flop to that. It's gonna be utilize a mass gainer shake. And this is for people that are trying to look to put on more muscle and size, all right? Like I said in the beginning, this isn't really geared, these, this list that we have isn't really geared towards a specific group, whether it be I'm trying to lose a lot of weight, whether it be I'm trying to build a lot of muscle and build a lot of size. It's kind of for everything. So we're going to offer a low calorie, uh, super low calorie option of protein. We're going to offer a higher calorie option for protein. So the same idea where we can get in a lot of calories in a short amount of time, protein is still up. And the way that you guys can do this is like usually through two ways, either buy the entire pre-made mass gainer shakes that you can see get like a supplement store. Um, that's perfectly fine. Or you can just make your own. And once again, you can go on YouTube and find a five meal mass gainer shake. That's like 700, a thousand calories. You can down it in like five or 10 minutes. Taste, it's going to taste super good. It's going to be high in protein and it's going to get the calories that you need if you're looking to build muscle and size. Yes. And it's funny that you said that about adding muscle because a lot of the demographic that I work with isn't necessarily trying to pack on pounds or gain muscle, but looking for ways to fit their calories and get their stuff done. And I use these kind of shakes, those really calorie dense ones for shift workers. So for the people who work at night, again, those people who uh, my nurses, law enforcement, first responders, you never know when you're going to be able to eat. Maybe you're on a really long call. You're um, in a situation to where you, you, you skip breakfast and lunch. You got to hit those numbers. You got to get it in. This is a great way to replace a meal, meal and a half with just one cup. You just fill that up. And like you said, you got 700 calories in there, plenty of protein. Helps for those people who have trouble just getting normalized meals in as well. Exactly. Exactly. It's like meal replacement right there. Yes. So yeah. that was my six right here. All right. So I'm going to let Leanne take it away with these next six. She's going to explain it all. 
Number seven coming up here, batch cooking. What batch cooking, what the hell is that? Yes. So I have a lot of clients who don't love meal prep and think that if they're going to do meal prep, they have to cook, you know, for six hours on a Sunday afternoon, give it all up. You don't um, make things in bulk. So, for example, this I'll use this weekend as prime way of how we do it in our house. I was making meatloaf. Meatloaf is a super easy thing to do. I make mine in muffin tins because then they're pre-portioned and easy to freeze. And then instead of making just two pounds, I made 10. I made 10 pounds of meatloaf and it only took me probably an extra 45 minutes. So it took me, I think from the moment I started to the moment I finished, I think it took me an hour and a half. I made 10 pounds of meatloaf, froze it. Now we have my, my husband who travels for work has lunch for a week. My son who works out, you know, manual labor, he's got lunch for the week. And then I have lunches for the week, plus some leftovers stashed ahead. Another one we do is uh, like chicken breast. If you're going to cook two, cook 10, store them in the refrigerator, shred them, and then store them in the freezer in individual little bags, because then you never know when you want to just throw something in some scrambled eggs, to bulk up that protein, or just you got home really late and you just want something fast and easy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Batch, yeah, whole in bulk. Bulk is always better. All right. Make everything all right. Number eight. All right. Find ways to add instead of taking away. All right. What, what does that even mean? Yes. Particularly when people are looking to start improving their nutrition um, way of moving through the world, they think they have to scrap everything, right? They can't have their favorite snacks. They can't have, just like we were talking about at the beginning, that, that crispy chicken. Find ways to add to instead of take away. So if you're saying, I don't want to snack anymore, reframe that, especially in the beginning as you're learning how to take on these skills and habits. I can have a snack, but I have to have five carrots first. I have to eat half an apple with a tablespoon of peanut butter. Then if I'm still hungry, I can have those chips. Look for ways to crowd out what you don't want by packing in the good things that you do. Yeah, that's a really good you know, habit trick there because a lot of times people fall short on diets or just on changes in nutrition because they're restricting themselves so much they're making all these changes at one time. And if you're making all those changes at once, sometimes it's just not sustainable. Then after a week or two, they just crash diet and crash and binge and, and all that stuff. So implementing the changes slowly and doing something what you just said, adding instead of just subtracting everything that's out of the diet, finding ways you can do that is definitely going to help you. Once again, whether you are losing weight, whether you are trying to gain weight and build muscle, anything like that, right? It's a great, great tip right there. All right. Number nine, prioritize protein. We already kind of went over this a little bit, but we just went over it mostly in the snack uh, realm. So prioritize protein, is that really all the, all day is, you know, what is that? So oftentimes I'll hear, you know, I don't know what to have when I'm hungry, when I'm tired, when I'm stressed, um, when I'm making a meal. I always have clients wherever they are in that planning sort of headspace, pick a protein. If all else fails, pick protein. So if they're working on filling out their weekly menu planner and they don't know where to start, start by plugging all your proteins in. Oftentimes, if you pick out what your protein is, the sides might come to you. You might always have broccoli when you have a pork chop. You might always like a rice pilaf when you make a meatloaf. If you pick that protein, it's going to help with some of the other planning. And when it comes to some of the other habits, if you prioritize protein, if you've got it, if you're snacky and you're choosing protein, you, you're, you're going to be off to the right foot. Even if you add something maybe not so awesome afterwards, if you put that in first, at least we're moving ourselves towards our goals. Yeah. And a great trick for that. I tell that to all my clients is like, okay, every meal that you have should be around 50% of that meal should be the protein portion. All right. So if you can do that, if you can have pasta and then have, but the other 50% is like chicken or it's the other 50% is like a lean ground beef, you know, that's a lot more protein and that's going to be a lot more satiating compared to having it just be like 20% protein and 80% is just straight pasta, straight carbs. So okay. if you can increase that portion size within the meal. That's also a really great tip there. All right. Yeah. So number 10 is use the tools to make things easier. When you talk about tools, are you talking about the phone? Are we talking about cooking tools? Any of them. So 
so whenever, whether it's the personal training side of coaching or the nutrition side of coaching, people think that to be successful, they have to have all the things, right? I have to have the fancy foam roller and then the, the, the trigger therapy point gun and I have to have the ice bath and I have to have the air fryer and I have to. No, you have to have what you're going to use to move you forward consistently. For myself, it's like on the nutrition side of things, it's a crock pot. I love my crock pot. My crock pot gets quite the workout every week, week in, week out, because it's a consistent way for me to pre-plan my meal and be consistent with my goals. Whatever the tool is, it doesn't have to be cr- shaker cup. That's another great one. You don't have to have fancy. It just it needs a lid and a shaky ball thing. That's all. Doesn't have to be crazy. Doesn't have to be twenty five dollars. Just the tool that is easy for you to stay consistent. Exactly, exactly. And one of the tools I mentioned before with an air fryer, I mean, like, that's, I mean, especially for people that are in college right now, I know that's a big portion of the audience that I have. I mean, that was such a huge thing for me in college was having the air fryer because it was so easy to prep. I could get home from class, easily put it in within, like, 10 minutes. It was ready to go. Um, Definitely it made things a lot more convenient. And that's kind of what the tools are supposed to do. That's what technology is supposed to do these days is make things more convenient for you so you can save time so that you can do other things. And then once the food is ready, you can eat that. And then if you really want to be productive, you can eat food and do your things at the same time. So, yeah, utilize yeah. the, utilize the tool yeah. by all means. All right. Number 11 is eat the things that you like and try new methods of cooking in, all, in order to learn new things. Yes. I – it always makes me smile when I have a client say, oh, I have to eat fill in the blank. I have to eat fish. I hate seafood. I hate it, but I have to eat it because it's good for me. Fun fact, there's no rule that says you have to eat something you hate. If you hate fish, don't eat fish. And learn to take the things that you do love, like we've mentioned a few times before, and try some new ways of cooking them. If you always do steamed chicken, try oven roasted. It's equally simple. It's, you know, one and done. You put it in the oven, set your timer, walk away. Try experimenting with different ways of doing things that you love because it's just going to expand your repertoire and it helps you not fall into that rut. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and it, Yeah, exactly. It helps you not get bored. Over stuff, and that's something that also relates to the weight room. That like people just do it; they do the same routine over and over and over again. It's like three months go by, they're doing the same routine over and over, and they just get bored. And so at some point, it's like, all right, switch it up. That's where like a program comes into play. But like for the most part, like you don't need to do the same thing each and every day that you go to the gym. It's just like eating. You don't need to eat the same thing, the same prepared, the same way, um, ordered in the same way every single time. You can mix it up and the by all chances, if you mix it up and try new ways of preparing it, of putting it together, it's going to make it a lot more entertaining for you. All right? And you're going to want to keep on doing it more and more and find new ways to do it, new and better ways. Yeah, totally. All right. Number 12, our final tip here is to change or <laughs> try, try and change the way that you work one at a time. I think I butchered that, actually. Yeah, so it says triage your changes. Okay. I can. <laughs> That's okay. So a lot of times when, especially if this is like you're just getting started or you've been doing it for a little bit, but you now have all these cool things you want to do or these, these things that you're going to improve on. Usually that list is pretty long. It's like a laundry list, right? You got 15 things you want to do, 15 things you're going to improve on and seven new things that you want to learn. You can't do it all at once. So I often have clients, I'll do this. And I'll literally write them down, you know, okay, you want, you, you know, you mentioned these 17 things that you want to work on. Cool. That's great. And they're all good things, but we can only do them a few at a time. So what's the mission critical top three? So triage them, put them in an order. And I always suggest picking for that top of the list, the ones that are going to give you the biggest bang for your buck. So the best return on that effort or the easiest place for you to gain that traction and gain some consistency. Yeah. I like that. I like that because, you know, it's so easy to like when you do get started in the fitness journey, if you are, you know, new to it and all that, and you want to do the training, you want to do the clean eating, you want to, you know, cut things out and really just like change everything around. All right. A lot of like new year's resolutioners do this. All right. And it's like I said before, it's too many changes at one time. 
You're trying to do too yeah. much stuff. You're trying to accomplish too many things all at once. Uh, you know, ask people that have actually done it, have, that have lost the weight, that have gained all the muscle, that have, that have achieved their goals. You know, they weren't doing like, oh, I changed like everything all at once. And from day one, it was just perfect. Like, no, they slowly implemented most of the time. It's like they slowly implemented uh, these ways that would help them to like their one or two goals because they didn't want to overdo it. They didn't want to overload themselves. But ultimately, that was how they were able to kind of like hit their stride and really like see the results and see the progress. Yes. And in this in this thought process is to remind yourself too that baby steps are still steps. Progress is the process. And if it's teeny tiny and you went backwards three steps and sideward 17 and around about three or four times and then took a step forward, that's all progress. And you've learned so much in doing that that the next time you take that step, it's going to get easier and easier. So don't discount the little victories because it takes many days added up together of little victories to get to that big change. Yes. Definitely, definitely. All right, guys, those are our 12 nutrition tips or hacks that can make things more simple or like simplify things for you. Hope you guys took something away and actually someone enjoyed it. All right, once again, uh, another week is done. Leanne, thank you so much for joining joining me this week. Um, definitely learned a lot, actually, especially the, the last tip. I think that might be the best one out of all of them. So thank you so much for that one because that was your tip right there. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. And I really enjoyed this. This was great. All right. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Leon, Leon, <laughs> Leon, take care. Uh, guys, I will see you all next week. Another uh, new coach coming in. Um, another Tuesday live coming in next week then. All right. See you guys.